Hello and welcome to another chess opening video where I dissect all the major openings that you can learn when playing the game of chess. This week we're continuing our Rui Lopez series and continuing with the old Steinitz variation of the Rui Lopez. It's a very common opening that you'll see, especially in the lower levels when playing this. And it starts with going e4, e5, knight to f3, f knight to c6, going bishop to b5. And then with the old Steinitz, your opponent will go d6. Now, I don't think if if your opponent knows what the Rui Lopez is, they'll open this up. So this usually comes from an opponent that doesn't necessarily know what they're doing. What we'll do in this video is we'll look at two different variations. The first being when we go to c3 next and when we go directly to d4 from here. The first we're going to be looking at is when we go to c3 here, hoping to push to d4 later. If white brings out this bishop to unpin this knight here, what we want to do is we're going to want to push up to d4 anyways. And as they develop, we take the knight here and attack the pieces. So after the exchange, we take the queens, we take the pawn, they exchange pawns, we castle. And as they develop their final bishop here, we're looking at a slight advantage for black, not the best for white. So in the old science defense, if we go C3 first, do not start exchanging pieces. It's at a detriment to you as the white player. It's just bad. It's bad habit. Don't take everything. The other, the other variation for going to C3 first is after going to C3 and they bring the bishop out. We, we take there and instead of taking, we castle right away. If they take the knight on there, that's completely fine. We bring out the rook and we'll attack the knight, causing it to leave. We're still up half a point even after they take that pawn. So it's not too bad for them to take that free pawn. Just continue playing your game as much as possible. The other C3 variation that you might see is after going to D4 and the knight comes out. We castle and if the bishop goes to d7, we're still up by a whole point here, even though no material has been exchanged. So the best thing that we hope for white is after they develop their beat their pieces out, we have nothing going. We can just play chess from this point on. We're at a good advantage. The other variation that we want to be looking at is if we go directly to d4. So after they go to d6, we push up directly to d4, attacking the center. If they take, we'll take with a knight. If they bring out the bishop to unpin the knight, we can then just bring out our knight here to c3 because we're not too worried about taking here because what you want to do from there is you will take with the bishop putting them in check and then taking the, the, the knight there. Black at this point would want to fianchetto their bishop, try to create more attacking lines because it's better than trying to leave a bishop out here. We develop our bishop over here to e3 and after bringing out the knight over here to e7, we push up to f4, trying to take more control of the center as possible. And after black castles bring up the queen to d2, we can push up here. It's going to be hard for black to not exchange pieces. We then can trade off the bishop with the uh, the batter that we have here. It's about an even game from here, but I would rather be in white's position than black's. The other d4 variation, which is not very great for white, is after they go to d6 and we go up to d4, we trade. If they unpin the knight and we bring up the bishop over here to e3 to protect the knight and they start fianchettoing if we exchange and they take it with a pawn we want to drop the bishop back but after they fianchetto and we we try to attack they bring out the knight black's getting really well developed while we really only have two two rooks out so we got to develop the knight and after they castle and us bringing our queen over here to d2 they take the b file of rook to b8 and we castle here protecting that pawn we're down two points here or white it's not the best thing so what you want to do in the old steinitz defense is to go c3 first and d4 try to take control of the center as much as possible and just play solid chess from there on out now if you like that video please like and subscribe to the youtube channel i also stream on twitch at twitch.tv slash where i play these variations every time i stream and after learning what i get from them i create a youtube video in hopes that you can learn from my mistakes next up we have the morphe defense and specifically in that variation we're going to look at the anderson variation it's a very theory heavy opening we hope to see you there that video will be here and you have a great rest of your day bye